Welcome back to the Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. You know, when I was a teenager, I listened to records incessantly. I still do, but not like I did back then. Every waking moment was consumed with music. I worked a part-time job so I could buy records before I had a car. And when I had a car, I wondered if it was possible to bring my turntable on the road with me, maybe in the passenger seat. I imagine stacking my favorite records in the back seat. It occurred to me that reaching back to get one while driving you know, might pose a problem. An even bigger problem would be you know, how to power the turntable. I wasn't inventive enough to come up with a solution myself, so the idea quickly died on the vine. And it's a good thing it did. Can you imagine the condition of those records today if I'd succeeded? Not only the negative results of the stylus skipping across the surface with every bump and turn, but also the effects of heat in a car on a hot summer's day, especially if I left my records out there. An hour in a hot car would have, well, pretty much left me with a handful of warped records. It was a briefly lived idea, and I wasn't the brightest teenager, but I loved records. I also had no idea that the entire concept had been thought of before. Not only had it been considered, it had been done just a couple of decades earlier. It had even been brought to market. Was it a success? Well? Back in the 1940s, the work to develop the first long playing record, which we know as the LP today, was developed by CBS Records. The man who led the project was Peter Goldmark. A footnote to that great achievement is what he focused on just a few years later. That was to put a record player in every automobile on the road. And that's if every automobile on the road was a Chrysler. In 1956, Chrysler unveiled the Highway Hi-Fi. The player sat underneath the dashboard and slid in and out. So, Chrysler ads claimed, you wouldn't have to take your eyes off the road. Distractions aside, that wasn't the only challenge the development team faced. There was also the question of size. The LP Goldmark's team had created almost a decade before was simply too big to fit beneath the instrument panel. It was also cumbersome. Can you imagine trying to change an LP while navigating city streets? Well, the team considered using 45s, but with only one song per side, you'd be changing the record every three minutes or so. So they came up with a new solution. A new record that retained the 7-inch size of the 45, but actually allowed for an hour per side. And to do this, they had to slow the speed of their new ultra micro groove record down to 16 and two thirds RPM, half that of the 33 and a third RPM. Now that's solved for having to change the record every few minutes, but there's a much bigger challenge. That's right, record skipping. The team's solution to combat this was twofold. First, they developed what was called an elastic three-point suspension to minimize movement. They also increased the pressure of the stylus, pushing it down so it wouldn't be easily jarred and pushed out of the groove. I think you can imagine what this meant. Massive record wear. But then again, it might keep people buying replacement records. The thing was, it had to be a record from CBS. They were the only ones who could supply the 16 and two-thirds format. And at the time that it all went to market, there was only a few titles to choose from. Actually, I believe less than 50. But it made its way to the buying public in 1956. If you ordered a Dodge, DeSoto, or a Plymouth, you had the option of adding the Highway Hi-Fi feature. The new feature, of course, came at a price, and a pretty hefty one, even by today's standards. It had a price tag of around $200. Today, that $200 would be around $2,000. Needless to say, the Highway Hi-Fi didn't make the splash Chrysler hoped it would. But you know the old saying, if at first you don't succeed, Chrysler tried again in 1960. That's when they introduced a successor to the Highway Hi-Fi called the Auto Victrola. Now, this was from RCA. And this time, 45s were used to negate the need to change them with every song the Auto Victrola allowed you to stack 14 records for continuous play. Not bad. Then again, considering nobody today has ever heard of it, it says a lot about the success of the Auto Victrola. And come to think of it, RCA loved their Victrolas and the Victrola name. I, I 
can't imagine how many times they've used it over the years. So was anything similar to this happening across the pond? Well, yeah. And not to be outdone by the quote-unquote Yanks, the Philips Mignon was marketed in Europe around the same time as the Auto Victrola. It also used 45s and made its way to the States under the Norelco brand. What it had going for it was some pretty big celebrity power. George Harrison was photographed with one in his Jaguar. The problem was, Phillips threw caution to the wind when it came to distracting the driver. While its slide-in and eject operation eerily foreshadowed the car CD players of the future, you could only play one 45 and one song at a time. Now, for those car buyers who wanted to break free from the radio and select their own music to play for their next drive, they didn't have to wait long. In 1965, Ford introduced the factory-installed 8-track tape player. Now, little did they know, 8-tracks wouldn't last much longer than a decade as a format of choice. If you think the dream of an effective car record player is gone, well, think again. In 2021, Lexus created a one-off luxury sports sedan model called the IS Wax. Its main feature? Well, you guessed it, a working turntable. Now check this out. My teenage self would have been beyond excited. So if you enjoy vinyl records as much as I do, feel free to subscribe. And if you would like to know when new episodes are released also, well just click the little bell icon down below. And until next time, you know, please take care of yourself and enjoy your records.